120 to 3000 of the raw gospel preached. Upon receiving the promised Holy Spirit, God's gift, the 120 are now ready for witnessing. Peter's first sermon, God raised up the man, Jesus, whom you, the Jews, crucified. We are witnesses of his resurrection. God has made the same Jesus both Lord and Christ. Cut to the heart, the people ask, what shall we do? Repent, metanoia, change the way you thought about Jesus. Now believe and be baptized in his name for the forgiveness of sins and to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. 3,000 souls added. They continued in the Apostles' doctrine, which is that Jesus is the Christ. All focus on Christ and nothing on the human shortcomings. Pure good news, no human effort no demands for change in behavior, zero rituals, zero religion. Your good news continues. None of me, all of him. After healing the lame man, Peter says, why marvel at us as though we did it ourselves? The source of the miracle power was pointed to God and not to their holiness, godliness. His name and faith in his name heals. Even faith itself is through him. We can't produce it ourselves. Repent. Change the way you thought about Jesus. Believe and be baptized in his name. He tells the Jews that God sent Jesus to bless them. That blessing was to turn the people away from their wickedness. He didn't say, you forsake your old ways or habits and come and accept Christ. The blessing turns people away from their wickedness, not the other way around. The original gospel was pure goodness with no strings attached. God's grace plus nothing gives salvation. The gospel explodes outside Jerusalem. Many believed the words of Peter and the miracle. The church strength increases from 3,000 to 5,000. When interrogated by the Jews, Peter, full of the Holy Spirit, once again points the source of the miracle to the name of Jesus Christ and Christ himself. He declares that salvation is in no other name but Jesus Christ. Jesus had healed a man who was lame for 38 years. Peter and John healed a man lame for greater than 40 years. They truly lived the gospel in greater works than what Jesus did, even right from the first miracle. Though flogged, persecution increased their boldness and vehemence to preach the gospel. With great power, they testified of his resurrection. Great signs and wonders were wrought through the apostles. Multitudes were added to the church. The gospel explodes outside Jerusalem. The sick were healed even through the shadow of Peter. The true gospel provoked jealousy among the Jews and religious folks. This happens even today. The apostles were jailed. Obedience to the faith and the first martyr. The angel frees them from prison and says, Go! and declare the words of this life. By now, Jerusalem was filled with the apostles' teaching. Peter declares, God raised up Jesus from the dead to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. 
multiplication of disciples. The apostles gave themselves to prayer and ministry of the word. A great multitude of priests became obedient to the faith. Definite article, a very specific faith that Jesus was indeed the Christ. The true definition of obedience in the New Testament. Very different from the Old Testament. The people had to obey the commandments. Here, they were obedient to the faith. The Holy Spirit is given to those who have this kind of obedience. After being persecuted, they never cease declaring the good news that Jesus is the Christ. Stephen's detailed discourse to prove Jesus was the expected Messiah. At his death, he sees the Son of God standing at the right hand of God. Just like Christ, he prayed, Lord, do not charge them with the sin. The true power of the gospel is not in judgment, but in mercy and forgiveness.